Hey guys, Aaron Dorr here. The number one reason we fight to defend our gun rights is to keep our own government in check. The second reason, though, is to defend ourselves and our loved ones against violent thugs who are bent on attacking us in our homes or on the street. In today's video, we're going to break down a recent self-defense situation and give you guys our take on what he did right and what he could have done better, perhaps, should it ever happen to him again, God forbid. Guys, as always, subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And with these reaction videos, we want you guys to give us your thoughts in the comments section. What did this guy do right? What did he do wrong? What would you do if this happened to you? Guys, as always, we are not lawyers here at AFA. We fight to defend the Second Amendment. I'm giving you my take on what I would do as a husband, as a father, if this happened to me. I'm going to play it right now for you guys at slow motion speed to break down some of these excellent details. Here we go. First thing to notice is the lag time here. After the guy parks his car, uh, well, the guy in blue and the guy in white notice the car. Now, in the town I grew up in a long time ago in northwest Iowa, I knew every car in my small town. So that's not how things are anymore these days. So if a car pulls up beside you and you don't know who's in it, you need to be aware of that. That situational awareness is lesson number one. Should he have backed up before the guy's door even opened? That's a fair question. I think he probably could have and should have. But let's keep going. Door opens up. The guy comes out of the car and right about now you can see a handgun in his right hand. So from here on, the guy in blue and the guy in white know there's a fight coming. No matter what, there's a fight coming. And so we watched this video here in the office at 1 100th speed. And from here, we could measure the reaction time from the guy in blue. Let's watch it at slow motion. Guy in blue sees the threat, begins to do what? Before he does anything else, he begins to create distance. That's obviously lesson number two. You have to have distance. Action beats reaction every single time. And so if the guy in blue had stood his ground and tried to react right there, the guy in orange would be on top of him immediately. So the guy began to create distance right away. Watch this. Creates that distance. But right here, Look right here. At this point, the guy in blue is backing up. He's got pretty good footwork, all things considered. But what do you see the guy in orange doing? Exactly. He is actually racking the slide on his handgun right now. So if the guy in orange had come out of that car with his firearm chambered, he would have had shots on target unless he missed, which, of course, they often do. But he could have had his shots on target before the guy in blue had his gun all the way up. So not carrying chambered for those who still do that is a lethal mistake that many people have made in the past. Thankfully, the guy in blue did not make that mistake. Let's watch. His gun comes up. Now, again, we measured this, and his reaction time, as best we can tell, from when he first saw the handgun in the bad guy's hands to get his first shot off is right around one and a half seconds. And that is critical for us to talk about. You know, there was a time in my youth when handgun training meant a bullseye target, two or three friends, 100 rounds of ammo, and we're trying to get the shots in the black circle. But that's just not the world we live in anymore these days. These days, your goal at the range should be to get your first shot on target in one and a quarter seconds. That should be your goal. Because, again, this guy did it in one and a half. But that's because the guy in orange gave him that time by not having his own gun chambered. Your goal should be one and a quarter seconds. You need to have a shot timer for your time at the range. Let's keep going. Firing, firing, firing. Let's just stop right here for a second. What do you see? Well, the guy in orange has turned a 180. He's turned a 180 to the guy in blue. Now, armchair critics will say that what you're seeing right here is, affection, you know, is functionally, legally speaking, murder. There is no longer a threat against the guy in blue. But people who do this for a living, lawyers, police officers, and those who've been through these shootings know that you can articulate in court how fast this happens and you were still reacting to that lethal threat. It is important to note the guy in orange still has that handgun in his hand. You can see it right there in his right hand. 
I am not saying the guy in blue did anything wrong at this point in the video. What do you think? Give us your feedback in the comment section. Let's keep going. He's engaging, 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 and last shot was fired right about there. I want to notice the guy's footwork. The guy did a great job at maintaining that fighting stance with his footwork. He has an excellent two-hand isosceles slash Chapman grip on that handgun. Great grip, great footwork, great fighting stance to be making those rounds and firing those rounds downrange on target. At this point going forward, though, the guy in blue does not engage the threat anymore. You can watch this. And knowing when to disengage from a threat is almost as important as knowing when to engage against a threat. Of course, engaging saves your life, but disengaging saves your freedom afterwards in a court of law. Because had this guy continued firing rounds downrange when that guy in orange and that car was a block away, they would certainly attack him for that in a court of law. Let's keep watching. He's watching the threat. He knows the most important thing now to protect himself is to keep eyes on the target. Some people would say, run away, go hide, but you don't know if that threat's going to come back. You don't know if he's actually all the way left the scene. At this point, when you're actively in a gunfight, keeping your eyes on the target at all times is critical, and he does exactly that. He walks out to the street, kicks off the flip-flops, get a little bit better uh, footwork. That's a good thing. The tactical unload, so to speak, of his sandals. He goes to about uh, mid-ready here. Some would say high-ready here. And he's watching that threat down the street. He never takes his eyes off that threat until it's no longer in his area. That is really critical stuff. So situational awareness, could he have done better there? Maybe a little. Give us your thoughts in the comments section. Carrying chambered. Thank God the guy in blue carried chambered. If he had not, he probably would have been dead at the end of this video. Number three, he created distance. He gave himself time to react. That is critical. He knew when to disengage from the threat as well. Also, very important stuff. We're going to play it again for you now at full speed. I want you guys to see exactly how fast this happens in real life. And this is critical because when you're going before a judge, your lawyer better be able to explain in real time how this happens so fast, why you took the actions you took. Now, the prosecution is going to play it back at 1 100th speed. They'll try to hang you out to dry. It is critical you can articulate why you acted the way you acted in full speed. Let's watch it right now again at full speed. And if there was one more lesson, just to interject here, you'll notice the guy in white. When the guy in the car comes out with a gun up, the guy in the white shirt raises his hands. I am no threat to you. So I guess if there was one more lesson, it is make sure your friends are carrying guns and can help you in a gunfight. Let's get back to it. Door opens up. Here we go. Total time of engagement from when the guy came out of the car with the gun to the guy finished his reaction is somewhere around six seconds. That's how fast it happens. That's how fast you have to have a plan in your mind in advance to stop that violent threat. Let's keep watching. He walks out here. He's watching that threat, kicks off the flip-flops, and never has to re-engage. Guys, that's our take on this video. What do you think? Leave your reaction, your comments in the comment section. As always, subscribe to our channel for more content and join the fight.